Welcome back everyone. We're going to talk about another interesting thing. Uh, the manufacturing, is it hard or is it easy from Tesla and Aptera standpoint? And we know that um, Tesla, they got a good number of gigafactories that they're putting their cars together and they use a lot of machinery, uh, a lot of robots, as you can see here, where they're actually um, putting the car frame together. But they also have the gigapress. And you see the guy here, he's mixing up hot aluminum. And there's the gigapress right there, and it's making a casting. And see, that is actually the rear end of the Model Y. So Tesla is working with steel, so they need a good number of uh, robots to weld the frame of the car together. But the Gigapress, they're a series of aluminum die casting machines manufactured by Hydra, and they're from out of Italy. They are notably for being the largest high pressure die casting machine in the world with a clamping force of 55,000 to 61,000 kilonewtons, each machine weighing 410 to 430 tons. Of course, the custom OL 6100 CS Gigapress, which started by Tesla in the late 2020 for production for the chassis part of the Tesla Model Y. Shots of molten aluminum weighing 80 kilograms or 180 pounds are injected into the cold chamber. That casting mode with a velocity of 10 meters per second or 22 miles per hour. The cycle time is 80 to 90 seconds. Can you imagine that? Just 80 to 90 seconds to create that part? And they got one for the front casting as well. Allowing an input rate of 40 to 45 complete castings per hour or a thousand castings per day. So that's pretty interesting. They can create uh, chassis for each car about a thousand a day. That's a thousand cars a day. They have really slim line manufacturing and Tesla is no joke. They are really putting all this together. Nothing's going to slow them down. And even though all the other old automakers, they're trying to catch Tesla. I tell you, um, Elon Musk, man, he, he is such a genius. That guy is really putting all this stuff together. And he really it looked like he's going to accomplish what he had set out to do. And that is to really get as many EVs on the road and as much ICE cars off the road as he can. So Tesla, you got to give them their props. They are really getting everything together. Um, but Aptura is doing a really good job too. They're going to slimline it even more. It's like Aptura. Well, what we'll do is we'll let Chris tell us what he's going to do. Let's take a listen to what Chris. Chris, what you got for us? But the first thing we want to talk about is this amazing new facility we're in here in Carlsbad, California, uh, where we have over 200,000 square feet of manufacturing space available to us now. Um, it's taken a long time to get this facility ready. Uh, the floors were an amazing adventure uh, that took us several months to, uh, to grind down. But uh, unfortunately, you know, the commercial real estate market is kind of changing from where everybody was using offices uh, to now everybody wants open and more flexible space. So uh, we just so happened to find a building that was all offices. So we had to tear them all out and make it into a manufacturing space. Uh, but now we feel very comfortable in our new building uh, and we'll be showing everyone more about uh, these facilities over time. Uh, we're um, just now kind of ordering the equipment to stage these facilities for manufacturing, uh, which we uh, hope to start to scale into by the end of this year. Um, we're thinking that uh, this facility here will be the final assembly plant, uh, and our second facility will be more for sub-assemblies, uh, so you'll get to see a lot and learn a lot about how these facilities come together over the next six months. Um, <clears throat> we've had uh, an amazing evolving relationship with a company called Red Viking. Um, something that makes uh, their products uh, super unique is their uh, autonomous guided vehicles that take our vehicles to be assembled around the factory floor uh, to the different stations where they need to be assembled. 
Uh, they're basically robotic carts that the vehicle sits upon. Uh, and then it goes through now our currently designed 12 stations to assemble in Aptera in just under two hours. But the cool thing about these robots is they can be programmed for different tack times. So in the beginning, if we're taking, say, 20 minutes per station, you can program the robots to move 20 minutes per station. And then as we speed up to 15 minutes to 10 minutes, the, the vehicles can just move faster. Um, and if there's a problem on the line, uh, say a part gets installed wrong or a part ends up, you know, obviously broken, you can have the robot take the vehicle off the assembly line, go over to a repair station, and when the vehicle's ready again, it can move it back into queue uh, to be ready for the next uh, assembly operation. And as we grow Aptera and have more um, Aptera variants, um, you know, um, assembly times may vary uh, between the variants um, as we get into maybe uh, bigger or different vehicles. Uh, these carts are really adaptable over time. So it's not the traditional automotive plant that has overhead gantries that you have to install that cost millions and millions of dollars and aren't very flexible. Um, you've heard of, you know, factory changeovers in automotive past where it's taken, you know, a factory almost a year just to change over from one line to another. And that's because all of this equipment has to be installed and it's very expensive expensive and very cumbersome to uninstall and, and ramp up to a new and different kind of automotive line. For us, it's really just changing the programming of the robots, how the robots move through the factory. So um, it's been an amazing relationship, and I think uh, Pablo has been very happy about how the uh, manufacturing floors come together with Red Viking. So here, as Chris was saying, uh, their partnership with Red Viking, had, and, and Red Viking, they're designing and building the AGV, or the automated guide vehicle to deliver and receive parts on an assembly line. Red Vikings AGV mobile production platform is versatile, flexible, expandable, and can be easily relocated. There are no building modifications required, allowing changes to happen quickly with a clean flat floor and quiet environment. And then check this out, the AGV can Char can be charged even when the vehicles are stationary, allowing them to charge while work is being completed. So this is a pretty awesome setup that um, Aptera and AG has. And as you can see, Aptera, they're keeping it relatively simple. They're not going after heavy machinery. They don't need a very large facility to operate out of. And, you know, like Tesla... The Gigapress, I mean, that's about the size of a two-story building. They need the heavy equipment, the machinery. They need the equipment to melt down the aluminum, to inject it into the Gigapress. The Gigapress um, cast molds it into the front and rear part of the Model Y, and they're probably going to do the Model 3 the same way with the battery pack in the middle, keeping that frame sturdy. Aptura doesn't need all that. They're, they have lightweight composites that they're using. Um, the heaviest thing that they're probably using is the, um, the aluminum frame or possibly even the batteries or even the motors. And, you know, they're just keeping it so simple and putting their car together. And yet it's going to be nice and sturdy and very safe. It's supposed to be seven times safer than um, a steel vehicle. So when they start gearing up, it's going to be pretty awesome. It's not going to take them long to put it together. They also have 3D printed parts that they use. So yes, Aptura is going to be doing something awesome. So we can look at the difference here. We see as we look at this uh, video here that the... Giga Texas is so large and they're comparing it right here with the Eiffel Tower and other buildings, some of the largest buildings in the world. But the Giga Texas is 338 meters or about 15 city blocks long. And that's how big this building is. So, yeah, they can produce a lot of stuff in a building that large. We know they're going to do the Model Y. We're going to do, they're going to do the, um, the um, Roaster, and they're also going to do the uh, Cybertruck as well as the 18-wheeler, the semis. And Texas, the, uh, 
Elon Musk, he's really going to uh, gear this factory up to really produce a lot of cars. Uh, but we can see that Aptura is going to actually take a different direction. Uh, I think the building that Elon made is roughly about 10 million square feet. And that's just the ground level. But if I'm wrong, let me know. Somebody can text me or they can put it in my email. Let me know. Um, but Elon, he's geared up for the long haul. But Aptura, they're going to keep it very simple. Just like with Aptura, we know that they came out with uh, the roaster when they started out. And then they went to the, the Model S. But Aptura is going to start out in the other direction. Because actually the roaster was like between 100 and... 30 and 70 thousand dollars if you could afford that but here at the Aptura that starts out at 26 thousand dollars something that you can really really easily can afford a lot of people are going to be able to afford that and also as they get geared up they don't need a large facility matter of fact their facility is only 200 square feet as or 200,000 square feet as uh, Steve brought out and the machines that they're using are so simple they just go from one spot to the next carrying the Aptura along and while the vehicle or the robot is stationary and people are working on the, the Aptera they could be charging the machines up if, as needed so yes, this is going to be so simple. They can buy a small facility anywhere in the world and set up for having these vehicles produced. And if they have to change it up, he said that all they have to do is just change the programming in each um, AGV. And we know how simple that'll be for them to set that up. So once they get everything cranked up, it's going to be easy for them to gear up because they don't have to spend a lot of money on such a large building to start producing their product to come out with it. And you know a lot of people would rather have a solar-powered electric vehicle to where it charges itself on its own. There's going to be so many people that's going to want... I mean, they already have over 25,000 orders right now. And yes, I would really recommend that you go ahead and get in on this and they're going to make more than just a two-seater they're also coming out with a four-seater and they're going to come out with a suv and they may possibly even come out with a van they are even talking about coming out with a semi and so you can see uh solar panels on the vehicle give you 40 miles of range yes this is going to be something that you really want to get geared up for i'm i'm sure they're going to be bigger than tech Te Tesla um, or at least come very close to what Tesla has because their manufacturing is so much simpler and easier the only thing is that they have to rely on other companies to provide equipment for them such as the the motor for in the wheels and uh, of course the harness for their electrical system that's run through the car throughout the car but yes they are really going to gear up and it's going to be really nice when they come out with this so yes i would rec highly recommend getting involved or ordering your vehicle now i want to thank all of you for your support and your help and i do appreciate all that you do for me i just want to say if you're new here please hit the smash that like and um of course, we want you to ring the bell. And we'll see you at the next one. These are not easy to make, but uh, I'm going to try to get the next one out as fast as I can. Y'all take care. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you at the next one.